Okay. Here we are in the NIVA, the NIVA, the national uh, partner that has been implementing frontline project with GNDR. What has happened here, tell us? Uh, with the frontline project, the NIVA has worked with six uh, communities in uh, various districts of Uganda. Uh, we have worked with the communities to address uh, natural disasters in like floods, like uh, droughts, uh, diseases, and, 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 and fires, and all kinds of natural disasters. And in addition to that, we've also looked at adaptation to climate change and creating communities that are resilient to climate change. So, so what are the main change that have happened here in Uganda? Can you mention some of the change that you've seen on the field? Uh, we have carried out advocacy activities where we have uh, equipped the communities to understand what climate change and disasters are all about and how to prepare themselves when they strike. We have also used indigenous knowledge in this training so that we can build on to what they already know and come up with local solutions. And for example, in the area of flooding, we have been able to see how they can clean up the drainage systems. We have been mobilizing them to uh, plant uh, trees and, and uh, home gardens that can take care of times when they don't have food. So for food security, for afforestation, We've also looked at how to support the communities to, to advocate for laws and bylaws that will ensure that their, their natural environment is not, is not destroyed by the climate change. And so some of these bylaws include ensuring that there's no cultivation in the wetlands and then the methods of farming that conserve the, the environment. We've also looked at the aspect of uh, giving them hybrid seeds and helping them to, to plant crops that, uh, will that would withstand the droughts and also the, the, the different diseases that the plants have got. So um, the advocacy, the training, the awareness creation about adaptation to climate change and uh, being resilient have been one of the core aspects of our work and in addition to that we worked with the members of parliament to pass a bill on a, on a disaster risk reduction there's already a bill on climate change but we realized that the way interventions were being done in the country to address issues of uh, disaster were like haphazard or just humanitarian in, in 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 perspective so the bill is going to be comprehensive and bring out a lot of uh, resources that will help people to address uh, disasters and plan for, for how to address them when they happen and instead of just uh, responding when it strikes. So how are communities where you've been implementing projects are doing now? How are they doing? Okay. Mm -hmm. Again, from as a, as a main. Yeah, 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 sure. So how are the communities where you've been implementing from plan? How are they doing now? There's a major difference, yeah, in those communities that are in the frontline project and those communities that are not. The major difference is the aspect of their livelihoods and incomes of the households. Because when we have been teaching them modern agricultural practices and uh, conservation, then their home, the household incomes have rise, risen because of increased production of their crops and this food security. And so the standards of living have definitely increased. So they are more resilient actually? It definitely. They are more resilient and they've been working together in terms of groups because we use the neighborhood assembly method to mobilize the communities. And as they meet to discuss the challenges that are happening in the communities in the area of livelihoods and survival, then they forge those relationships that help them to learn from each other and work together as teams and uh, work on how to conserve their communities. So any lesson learned from this process? that you would like to share with people who will be looking at you? Uh, one of the major lessons learned is uh, we need to demystify climate change and disaster risk reduction and make it realize, make the people realize that uh, if they work together to address these challenges that they have because of nature, they don't get overwhelmed. Like for the flooding, yeah, when it would flood in some of the communities, 
they would flee to another area and come back in the dry season. But we're saying, no, you don't have to leave your homes. How do we manage this flooding? And make sure you clear the drainages so that the water goes. And make sure that you don't uh, overpopulate yourself in certain areas, let the water flow, and clean up the place. And so, and then recycle some of the, uh, like the garbage they've got. So they've learned that you can adapt and, 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 and live within those communities than moving. We've also learned the need to bring people together beyond just the climate change, just the risk reduction messages, but broaden it to the issue of uh, savings. The savings scheme has been a major innovations. innovation. So each person brings in money, and so they are attracted to come for these meetings beyond just the topic of uh, uh, disaster risk reduction. So as I understand, you've been really involved in the communities and you've been working with the communities to improve their livelihood, to strengthen their capacity. So is there any message you want to share uh, on the youth on how and why people should uh, commit uh, local communities, why people should include local communities? Is there any message that you would like to, to, to send to decision makers? Yeah, local communities are the, the front line of uh, disasters. They face the brunt of the problems when these disasters strike. So they're the people who are hit most. So they need to be involved from the stage of planning, implementation, monitoring, delivery, everything, all the way. Because if you design programs for those people and they're not involved, then you, and you exclude them, then you miss out a major component in the program. So the voices are very key to inf inform planning and, and delivery and, and monitoring. So they are, they are the key people that we are here to serve. We are looking at people who are living in extreme poverty, people who are vulnerable, people who are marginalized. And if we are talking about development, then they have to be around the table and give input in whatever decisions we have to make. So you, you, you mean uh, that there should be a kind of partnership with local communities? Yes, yes. Partnerships with all stakeholders, in, in short. Because if you have the, the local communities, the local governments, you have the private sector, you have civil society, you have government around the table, then I'm sure that whatever decisions you make and whatever programs you design, they will be for the good of everybody. And that's what development should be, and that's what we're advocating for. Now, uh, Frontline is officially closing. Mm -hmm. The fund is, uh, the period of implementation is uh, passed already. How do you think that all this lesson learned, this experience, should be kept on the field and should continue on the field? The major success story and the confidence we have in the sustainability of this project is because of the knowledge they have gained. Yeah. If you teach someone how to fish and give them a fish, then you've empowered them. So the people have been empowered with information, with knowledge, with training, and they've seen the difference of their lives before the project came in and their lives after the project has come in. So because of that, they'll hold on to that knowledge and keep implementing it. And then also we've been organizing them under the neighborhood assembly mode, where they keep meeting maybe on a monthly basis, sometimes on a weekly basis, to deal with issues in the communities and how they're affecting them, and coming up with solutions. So even this forum, I'm sure they'll keep bringing out the issues that affect them, and issues of disasters and, and climate change will keep coming up, because they are affecting them on a day-to-day -day basis. So the neighborhood assembly, the knowledge they have got, and also the savings scheme we talked about, coming together, pulling resources together to invest in issues that uh, addressing issues that affect the communities will keep them moving forward and, and will keep this project objectives uh, you know even beyond the project ending they'll continue implementing these activities i'm confident about that thank you madam thank you too. could you say some more you said that you must answer because you mentioned front line yes gets in the project oh it would, it would help it for, for the okay interviews. okay so Okay. Yeah. I know he was coming with that. <laughs> okay, that was your So, uh, let me. Are you able to repeat so you all? I will I try. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'll yeah, try. Uh, Doesn't uh, matter. Uh, uh, let me, Sustainability. No. Yeah, it is. What yeah, is that? But, but what we are looking for now is 
<coughs> question for you, you pronounce the, the front line. The, the yes. Yeah. So okay. You said the, the project. The project. Mm -hmm. is yeah. Is it, mm -hmm. Yeah. You could, is it of front line? Mm. Okay. Yeah. I'll do that. So uh, only one question, right? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it will be no, not yet. Don't record. Let me find the question first. <laughs> <laughs> This will be about uh, sustainable lessons learned. No, how the pro, how front line has uh, you think that we're talking about the change, the impact. Yes, yes. what has been the impact of front line? Mm, the impact yeah. of the front line yeah. and yeah. how it will. Uh, and your answer mentioned front line. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm. okay. okay. So, uh, what are the impacts of front line on communities? Uh, Maybe at national level, any, any impact that you can mention? Frontline has supported the communities to transform their lives. They have been able to appreciate the training and the knowledge they have gained to improve their household incomes through improved agricultural practices that have increased their yields and they have been able to sell these products or produce and raise the money. Frontline has enabled their communities to appreciate that uh, there's a, they can work together to address the environmental, natural disaster, climate change problems that they are facing. So that information is going to be continue helping them to, to improve their lives. Frontline has been able to enable the communities to engage with the local governments and create bylaws for example, that have made their communities not uh, construct or plant into the wetlands and so conserving the environment. Frontline project has been very helpful in, in negotiating with the, the parliamentarians and the sector ministries to come up with a disaster risk reduction bill. So Frontline has been very instrumental in transforming their lives and making sure that uh, there's increased, uh, improved livelihoods and increased incomes that will transform their lives. Thank you so much. I'm eating up words. That was great. No, no, that no, no. Great. I hope you can get something. Yeah.